This is going to be a relatively quick comparison between the Lenovo ThinkPad X240 on the left and the Lenovo ThinkPad X270 on the right. They're both going to be running on a battery unless I need to plug the battery in at some point. Opening them up, you can see a couple of differences, mostly around the trackpad. That's the obvious one. The X270 has a newer trackpad and the top is solid and the bottom clicks in. On the X240, the whole trackpad clicks in. And this can make it a little bit difficult to use at times. These buttons here used for when using this little joystick controller here. This one has the optional fingerprint reader. The power buttons are both in the same place. They both have the backlit keyboards. They have different logos. As you can see, Lenovo down here, Lenovo down here, and X270 over here, X240 over here. They're both running Windows 11 Pro. I'm not sure why this one has decided not to show the screen. I may, oh, there we go. Windows 11 does an annoying thing where it decides to make the logon screen particularly slow. This has a higher resolution 1920 by 1080 screen. This has a lower resolution screen. You could get a higher resolution screen for this. Um, it was one of the options as far as I'm aware. We're in Windows now. I've set both of them to best performance so that even though they're on battery, they should be running as best performance mode. This one has two batteries, an internal battery and the external battery that's also larger. This one has just the external battery and it's the thinner one. So this one with 66% has one hour 10 left. This one with 85% combination of both batteries has eight hours, 15 minutes left. Um, even though it has a higher performance processor, this is the i5 7th gen 7200 and it's got 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. This one on the left has a 4th gen Intel i5 4300 and 8 gigabytes of DDR3 memory and this also has a SATA drive whereas this has an NVMe drive. Um, if we go back to the processors, they're both dual core processors with four threads. And this one starts at 2.5 gigahertz, but can also turbo. This one starts at 1.9 gigahertz, but can also turbo as well. And the trackpad is being a little bit awkward here on the left. You'll notice this screen's a little bit brighter and I've adjusted the brightness to maximum for both screens. This one appears to have a bug where it gets stuck at 0.4 gigahertz when it is on battery mode. So I'm going to have to plug this in for this comparison um, and then we can get better performance. So I'm currently trying to work out why it's doing that and how to avoid that happening. So let's just disregard that for now. That's kind of an issue I'm having with this laptop that is perhaps separate to this comparison. So let's start Microsoft Edge on both of them. This one hasn't been run before. So I just need to go through these settings. You'll also notice this has a US keyboard, this has a UK keyboard, and let's have a look at WebGL Aquarium. This one loaded quicker, but they're both there. They're both getting 60 frames per second. Then we'll go up to a thousand fish. And this is actually at a higher resolution, so this has a harder challenge to face. 
again 60 frames per second as the number of fish are increased and this has dropped to about 40 frames per second this has dropped to about 50 frames per second so this is giving bigger better performance even though it's at a higher resolution so um let's just have a look at how many tabs we can open so we've got about six tabs open there plus some others and it's not really causing an issue for either laptop you know uh, web browsing is going to be absolutely fine on these two machines this one seems to scroll a little bit quicker when it's drawing the page compared to this one which is a little bit slower but you know it's not a big issue so I'll also run performance test uh, Passmark software to see what the difference is between these two machines when compared in that way. And we'll also have a look at Diskmark to see the difference between the SSD drives, or rather the difference between the SSD and the NVMe in this one. So I'll just quickly run through the performance benchmark. So this is Passmark. These are the results. I'll put the video of this running at the end of this video. Um, it's quite long. I plugged the power into this, ran it on this one, plugged the power into this, ran it on this one, just to make sure they had full power. And you can see that uh, CPU mark over here is 2500. Over here it's 3500. 2D mark 176. 2D mark 226. 3D mark 482, 3D Mark 653, Memory Mark 1502, Memory Mark 1819, and Disk Mark. This is where there's a really big improvement, you know, a thousand more here, a little bit more here, a little bit more here, a little bit more here, and here, massive improvement in speed thanks to the MVME. And we'll just run... Um, Crystal Disk Mark to show you in actual numbers um, what that speed difference looks like. So I'll just click through these so you can have a quick look at these if you want and you can pause them if you want to. Um, I've accidentally clicked run. You're seeing the read speed much quicker. Write speed on this seems very slow. For some reason this one decided to go slow on the left. And same settings on both and I'll click all and we'll come back when they're run. So there we go. This is with a 120 gigabyte SSD drive, a Kingston drive, read speeds 550 megabytes a second, write 455 megabytes a second. That's what you'd expect with SATA 3. This is a 250 gigabyte Toshiba NVMe drive, and we're getting 1624 read and 785 megabytes a second write speed. So much quicker, almost three times quicker for this bit and well actually over three times quicker for the read speeds and then quicker write speeds as well so we've had a look around the system let's have a look at the internals so I'll shut these down and then we can have a look inside So this is the larger battery on this one. And this is a 72 watt hour battery. This is the smaller battery on this one, a little bit more difficult to get out because there's nothing to grab onto. And this is a 24 watt hour battery. 
both have about eight screws on the back to undo. They're all captive screws. And they're standard Phillips head screws and it's fairly straightforward to get in here. Let's take the back off that and that's the X270. It's got some padding here. And then this is the X240. Again, some padding. There's some difference how they've made these. So X270 over here, X240 on this side. And then Inside this has the internal battery fitted on the X270. This does not have the internal battery fitted on this one. This is the cooling setup. It's got a thermal pad on part of the processor. And the copper goes all the way around here. On this one, I think it's probably copper again, but they've painted it all black. There's a little bit extra sort of foam padding there. A different design of fan. This is DDR4 memory that can be changed here. And then there's also this slot for the Wi-Fi and then another slot here. And this sort of setup is very similar on both. And then on this one, we've got a SATA drive connected here with a usual SATA cable. As you can see here, just a standard SATA connection. On this, the X270 with DDR4 RAM compared to the DDR3 RAM, we have got this adapter or setup it uses the same space as the SSD, but instead has an NVMe drive in here. So we'll just have a quick look at that. So there's one screw here. There's one screw on that one as well. And then once this is undone, it comes away. And you can sort of see there's this adapter board, cable, and an NVMe drive in here. And you need to take apart these two screws out to get to that drive. There's some padding under there. And this all changes on the X280. It doesn't have an external battery and it does just have an NVMe drive that plugs into the main board. The connections on these, I haven't really mentioned much about them, but on this side, they're pretty much the same. Memory card, USB, audio, Ethernet, Kensington lock, which actually has a metal frame there. On the other side, there's some other differences though. On the X240, we've got VGA. We've got a mini display port so you can plug in an adapter to that. Got USB as well. And the power connector. On the X270, we've got USB, HDMI, USB C, which I think you can use to power it, and then the power adapter. And that is the X270 compared to the X240 and these batteries are interchangeable you can put them in different ones and you can get different size batteries as you can see and all that's left to do is put them back together so let me know what you think what is your favorite ThinkPad leave a comment below if you have a specific model you like, let me know why. What features do you 
refer. And if you haven't already, click subscribe and feel free to share the video. Definitely appreciate people sharing videos and leaving a comment. Always fun to read. Thanks again for watching and see you in another video. Bye.